Do you find yourself wondering how one squash differs from the other, but you're not sure where to begin? You have come to the right place. That was me years ago. My name is Tiffany, and I am so excited you're here. I help busy millennials create healthy meals and minutes without stress and overwhelm, while also guiding them towards becoming the best possible version of themselves through food, family, and fun. And for those adults wanting to indulge every once in a while, I also offer beverage pairing recommendations with quick, easy recipes. If you're curious about how we can work together to help you develop into the best version of yourself, check out my website in the description below to submit your application and be sure to follow me on social media for daily tips and tricks. In this video, we are going to cover five common varieties of squash and how you can enjoy them and why you need to this holiday season. And that's not all. I also have a super simple strategy to help you create healthy meals and minutes without stress and overwhelm. So be sure to stick around until the end so you can start saving time, money, and energy in your kitchen today. So the first squash variety that we are going to talk about is one of the most popular, and that is the spaghetti squash. Now this squash and all the others that are going to be featured in this video today are all from my own personal garden where I have spent most of this year with our squash, zucchini, pie pumpkins, popcorn, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and so much more. We have a busy summer. Now this spaghetti squash, as I said, is one of the most common. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with spaghetti squash, this has a very thick skin and a very stringy texture on the inside, similar to thin spaghetti noodles. So it's a very common substitute for pasta and veggie noodles. With this spaghetti squash, you are going to cut it in half and roast it top side up at typically about 400. For this one, you're going to want about 40 to 45 minutes, but it is going to depend on the size. Now, my favorite way to roast spaghetti squash is to brush the insides with a little bit of our garlic infused canola oil, sprinkle with some rosemary herb or Italian seasoning, and roast. Delicious. Now, you definitely want to scrape out the seeds. A scoop loop is perfect for this because that is going to get all of the seeds out of there and you can roast those seeds later for a delicious snack. Simply lay them out to dry on a sheet pan for about 24 hours and then you will roast them on that sheet pan for a delicious crunchy snack. Now you can just simply season with a little bit of salt and pepper or you can get a little creative with some everything bagel seasoning, everything but the pizza seasoning, Italian seasoning, or whatever your heart desires. But seeds aside, let's dive in to some other recipe ideas on how you can enjoy your favorite spaghetti squash. Now, in addition to just simply roasting with that oil and herb combination, it is most commonly used for spaghetti. Who'd have thought? So once it is done roasting, you'll take a fork and just shred that noodle, helping the flesh come apart from this outer skin. Serve with your favorite red sauce with or without ground meat, and you have got a nice, healthy vegetable alternative to traditional spaghetti. But there is so much more that you can do with spaghetti squash. So some of my favorites are a using Alfredo sauce instead of your red pasta sauce. You can also use some Thai curry sauce, which is delicious for anyone else that enjoys curry. But you can also stuff your spaghetti squash and cook it that way while it's roasting. So one of my go-tos is lasagna stuffed spaghetti squash. So just like your typical lasagna casserole, you're going to put all of that inside the filling where you scooped out the seeds and cook that way. You can also do this with tacos and burritos for a nice vegetarian alternative. You can use ground meat or your favorite meat alternative. The sky is the limit when it comes to experimenting with squash. The second variety that we are going to talk about today 
you might not be quite as familiar with, and that is buttercup. Now, just like this spaghetti squash, buttercup has a very thick skin as well, but instead of a stringy texture, it's very sweet and kind of a mush like you would typically think of when you hear the word squash. So it's going to be very similar texture wise to a potato or a sweet potato. Now buttercup is very sweet. So typically you don't need to add any brown sugar or butter. It is sweet enough on its own, but of course you are more than welcome to add that to it if you desire. So buttercup for some common recipes. The most is to just roast it and mash it as is. Again, you don't need to add any sweeteners to it because it is already very sweet on its own. So save the calories and enjoy that piece of pumpkin pie instead. But you can do more than that with your buttercup squash. So you can chop it up and roast it that way. You can also turn it into a Thai curry soup. Uh, because the buttercup mashes very well, it makes it perfect for any pureed squash soup recipes. And this is also super easy to make in your deluxe cooking blender. Because guess what? The blender cleans itself, saving you time and energy in the kitchen because you don't have to worry about doing those extra dishes since the blender will clean itself. Pretty awesome. Another great option is to turn this into a Mexican casserole. So you'll dice it up and then add all of your taco fixings in that casserole dish, roast until that cheese is melted and it is good to go. Uh, it's also fun to add up some crushed tortilla chips, especially if you find yourself with the bottom of the bag and you're not sure what to do with those broken pieces. Add it to the top of your Mexican casserole for a nice crunch addition. Now, before we jump in to the next squash variety, I want to hear from you. What is your favorite way to enjoy squash in your own kitchen? Drop it in the comments below so we can learn from each other and share recipes. I look forward to seeing what you share. Now, next up is one of my personal favorites, and that is the butternut squash. Now, this one is also very common, and it is the most versatile of all of the squash varieties. The butternut has a very thin skin, so you can take it off right with a vegetable peeler. Super easy. And with this one, you can roast in half, but my recommendation is to slice it or dice it instead. So butternut squash is perfect if you just cube it and roast it on a sheet pan with a little bit of seasoning salt. You can also do a combination of cayenne and brown sugar for a little sweet heat. Or one of my personal favorites is slicing it into wedges or full round slices and putting it on top of pizza. Now we discovered a butternut squash pizza recipe from Taste Buds about a year ago now and have fallen in love since. We make it all the time, especially in the fall and winter when we have fresh butternut squash just like this from our garden. Now, if you're curious about Taste Buds, definitely reach out to me to learn more or check out the link in my description below to see how you can use Taste Buds to start saving time, money, and energy in your kitchen right away. Now, aside from that, butternut squash also makes a great soup recipe and risotto recipe. So just like I had said before with the sheet pan, you'll roast it just like that. Save half for a garnish and the other half you'll mash up with your barrio rice to make a nice creamy risotto and then reserve those roasted chunks on top for a nice garnish. This is delicious, perfect one pot comfort food recipe in the fall. Now some other options would be the soup. You can also add a little bit of curry powder for a nice curry soup with your butternut squash. And you can also just 
roast the seeds just like all of the other squashes for a nice crunchy treat. Now our fourth option, which also has a very thin skin, is a delicata. And this can come in multiple color variations. So you may be more familiar seeing it in a green and white combination, but just like all of the other squash varieties, they come in many colors and slightly different shapes. Now the delicata is just as another sweet one, so similar to that buttercup variety, but not quite as sweet. You may still wanna add a little bit of brown sugar or butter to this delicata as you are roasting it. Uh, one of my favorite ways to do it is to roast with halves or slice up into wedges and drizzle with a little bit of honey or maple syrup for that added sweetness. This is going to pair perfectly with your steaks, grilled pork chops, and roasted chicken breasts for a nice fall comfort food. Now, delicata is sometimes known as a sweet potato squash, given the texture and the slightly sweet flavor. It also is going to have that mostly characteristic texture that you would think of when you think about eating squash. Now, before we jump into the last variety, I want to remind you to hit the subscribe button because I'm dropping videos like this every week and I would hate for you to miss out on the next one. So our last variety of squash is the acorn squash. Now this one also comes in a variety of colors. This green is the most characteristic, but you can also find it in white, uh, yellow, orange, and striped. Acorn squash got its name, not just because of the acorn shape, but because it also has a nutty flavor. And unlike the other varieties, this thin skin squash also has edible skin. So when you're roasting it, you don't have to scrape everything out if you don't want to. You can get extra nutrients right from the skin. So with this squash, you can cut in half and roast just like the others, or you can change it up a little bit to slice with wedges, drizzle with either honey or maple syrup, and sprinkle with feta cheese during those last five minutes of browning for a nice, sweet, cheesy deliciousness. Just like spaghetti, acorn squash is also a great one to have stuffed. So you can stuff these with tacos, burritos, lasagna, you name it. The sky is the limit when it comes to acorn squash. Possibilities are truly endless. Now, another great option, especially if you're looking for a dessert this holiday season, is to stuff it with pecans and maple syrup. It is going to caramelize and become your new favorite holiday dessert. Now, if you are ready to continue the fun in saving time, money, and energy in your kitchen this season, I have got three simple steps for you. First one is to incorporate theme days into your meal plan. So some of our favorites are Meatless Monday, Taste Buds Tuesday, Thai Thursday, Stir Friday, and Slow Cooker Saturday. By using theme days, it helps save you time by taking the guesswork out of wondering what's for dinner. You can instead have an endless list of recipe ideas to fit each of those theme days and simply choose whatever fits what's on sale or what you find in your own kitchen. Now, the second is to poll your family to incorporate family favorites. It's important to keep your family involved with the meal planning so that way your kids are more likely to participate in those family meals. And by having those family favorites, it gives them a piece of comfort knowing that they have something to look forward to and makes them more likely to try those new recipes that you come up with following along with your theme days. And number three, try taste buds. Taste Buds is a monthly delivery service where you get three recipe cards, each with a featured recipe, and endless inspiration in your online portal. You also gain access to our 10-day add-on marketplace where you can add additional products 
to your kitchen without paying extra shipping. It's going to ship right with your Taste Buds subscription. It is amazing. And we also have added perks for subscribers, such as you get first access to brand new seasonings before they are released anywhere else. In the past, these have had included honey sriracha, garlic parmesan, and a black truffle herb. It also is a great way to instill creativity in your kitchen and boost the fun for the entire family. If you are ready to learn more and be sure to grab your copy of my free weeknight recipe guide in the description below so you can start saving time, money, and energy in your kitchen right away.